It's a good day to brew, baby. What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy. We're the hometown commander, and we are back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I brew my version 1.0 deck list of the commander in front of us on my quest to outbrew your favorite magic channel. If this is your first episode of Millsy Brews, the way the show works is the deck list is going to be down in the description. I'm going to walk you through the deck as I built to talk about strategies, card inclusions, and go card by card on why the cards are in the deck. Um, but if you're not interested in that, I completely understand the deck is in the description. Let me know what you think down in the comments, but otherwise, let's rock into it. Today, we're talking about Niv-Mizzy. Niv-Mizzy's back. Uh, of course, last time we saw Niv-Mizzy, it was five colors in War of the Spark, and he's back in Magic Machine, the aftermath with niv Mizzy Supreme. Um, I am absolutely in love with the Ravnica frame. I'm glad that we got a few classic Ravnica characters back in this frame, and of course, we got niv Mizzy himself, five colors for a 5-5 five, five dragon avatar, flying hex proof monocolored so that's pretty cool because most of the cheapest removal in commander is monocolored so i like that but this ability is kind of fun each instant or sorcery card in your graveyard that's exactly two colors exactly two colors has jump start you may cast that card from your graveyard by discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs okay so every instant or sorcery in our graveyard that's exactly two colors doesn't matter how many mana pips but as long as it's only two colors it has a jump start. And this is kind of an interesting ability because if you think about it, all of the best removal in Commander, in my opinion, is two colors, or most of the most, you know, wide-reaching, most efficient, you know, removal in Commander is two colors. I mean, yes, Plowshares, Path to Exile, you know, exist, but I think those only hit creatures. When you're talking about removal, it can hit nearly anything. Most of it's in two colors. Also, there's just a lot of really fun two-color spells. In Magic, we have the Command Cycles, we have the Charm Cycles, so there's there's lots of different things that we can do with these two-color spells. So I've kind of built the deck to have things that are going to take advantage of us casting the spells on the front end, and then just a bunch of spells that are going to allow us to reap great value when we cast them the first time, and then we'll recast them the second time. Uh, the other great part about niv its ability is... Uh, we can cast instance out of our graveyard at any time because they have jumpstart. So this is great because the removal gets twice as good because we use it the first time, it gets into our graveyard, and then we can use it uh, again. So starting off with the lands, I actually decided to um, build a little bit of the gate sub synergy into this deck. I just feel like it felt right. We're talking about Ravnica, we're talking about Niv-Mizzy. So we have all of the gates and mazes ends. So that's a little bit of a sub theme if um, that's one way we could potentially win the game is by getting all of the gates. I doubt it. I think it's just a fun way to add some flavor to the deck uh, in that way. Getting into our enchantments, Jeskai Ascendancy seems like a really great card in this deck just because it's going to untap all of our creatures. Um, no, it doesn't give them haste. But we have a couple creatures that are going to make tokens when we do things. There's a couple spells in our deck that are going to make tokens when we cast uh, spells, like like the Shark Typhoon that we'll talk about in just a second. But what I like about this is um, it's just going to give our, our creatures a little bit of buff and help us swing out for some damage when we're casting these spells and not just... Um, you know, not just slinging spells for the heck of it and not getting much of a payoff. And then the bottom ability says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, we can draw a card if we do discard a card. I like this because if we have a spell we don't really need right away, but we can always cast later, we can just pitch it, draw a new one, right? Draw a new card, pitch that spell, and then, of course, later we can cast it with Nimbus. Um, Mirari's Wake seems like it perfect for this deck. Um, of course, these enchantments don't need to be two-color because we can't cast them out of their graveyard, of course, with Nimbus. But Mirari's Wake's just going to double the amount of land, uh, uh, mana we produce, and that's that's perfect, exactly what we need. A little bit of a buff to our creatures, but mainly there for doubling up that mana. Shark Typhoon, here we go. Here's how we're going to get some creature tokens, whether they're block or whether we're going on the offensive with them. We need something like this to help us... Um, push forward and eventually end the game if need be by combat. Smothering Tithe is just going to help us get mana. I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're going to need mana to take these explosive turns or just use a, a mana on our opponent's turns for removal and things like that. And Tithe is going to be a great way to do it. I decided to try out the Kami War. Seems like a fun card, especially for the backside, but six mana for a Saga. Um, number one, we exile target uh, non-land permanent opponent controls. Two, return up to one of the target online permit to its owner's hand, then each opponent discards a card, and then we flip it into Oka, oh, uh, Oka, Okagachi. But I, the the effect I like is the bottom ability, which says whenever it attacks, defending player chooses a non land card in your graveyard, return that card to your hand, and it gets plus X plus one to the turn where X is the mana value of that card. So what I kind of like about this on the backside is whenever it attacks, 
opponent picks a thing, comes back to our hand. Hopefully it's a spell, right? And then we can play it again, and then we can kind of potentially play it a third time, right? Because we could then jump start it at that point instead of just playing it twice. So I kind of like that because it's going to make it kind of interesting um, for us in that way. And then we have a Thousand Year Storm. And Thousand Year Storm just feels perfect. A, it was a Ravnica card. Um, and B, because um, it's going to help us double up on the things that we're casting and potentially help us uh, end the game, you know, in, in a turn or get a bunch of land drops in a turn or just do a bunch of good things. So I like Thousand Year Storm and deck like this because it's just going to help us out. Uh, the two big artifacts we're playing because it was a something I hadn't really thought about um, until I was kind of thinking through Nimbus and that's, well, we have to pitch cards, right, to cast the cast these spells of our graveyard. Why aren't, why aren't we pitching lands? And then if, because we're probably going to have too many or we can only play one per turn. And then Condor to Worlds and Crucible Worlds will let them play them back out of our graveyard and kind of recycle them that way. So that seems like a really cool Chromatic Lantern. seems perfect for a deck like this because it's not going to give us access to all five colors, but it's going to have all of our lands tapped for any mana of any color. So it's going to kind of completely fix the mana issues we could have fell or stone of course now no matter who we play against farewell stone is going to give us a color a uh, fire Rind vessel just seemed right uh, of course nib is on the card so it only felt right to put it in here adding two mana of different colors and it's just going to probably end up being useful and then phyrexian altar we have so many uh creatures that are going to make us tokens when we cast spells so uh or or things like shark typhoon right so i like phyrexian altar it could potentially help us sacrifice some creatures in our opponent's turn get some mana back uh, to cast our spells getting out into the instance you see the instances uh, where we have the most sorceries of course we have a bunch but um the instance are where we have the most because for example, here, this is where we can get all of our two mana spells, get them into the graveyard or cast them the first time, then get them in the graveyard and cast them again. And as you can see, in this two-color combination, we have access to some of the single best removal in the game. Anguish to Making, Assassin's Trophy, D-Spark, um, Terminate. You know, we just, we have Bedevil. We have these great removal spells that hit so many things. I mean, I think Assassin's Trophy and Anguished on Making are the two obvious ones because both of them hit any non-land permanent. One destroys, one exiles. You have D-Spark, which exiles. But you think about it, we cast these the first time, put them in our graveyard, and we can jumpstart them out of our graveyard. Then I just tried to pick a bunch of other two-color spells that either are going to net us a ton of value when we cast them or, you know, give us utility if we need to cast them out of our graveyard. I think the perfect example are the charms and the commands that we're playing. We're going to get these into the graveyard either by casting them or discarding them. And then they have so many different scenarios we can use them. So Tarkus Command, opponents can't gain life. Deal three damage to each opponent, put a land from our hand on the battlefield, or creatures we control get plus one, plus one, and reach until in turn. Well, this is great because it can put a land down, which is pretty nice. It could stop our opponents from gaining life. But the, probably the biggest upside here is... You uh, give your creatures plus one, plus one, and then put a land from your hand on the battlefield, get it into your graveyard, and then do the same thing again. So I like that. Azorius Charm, uh, lifelink, draw a card, put attacker blocking creature on top of its owner's library. So I like this one because we can use the lifelink on the front end if we want to, and then try to use the uh, putting attacking or creature, blocking creature on the top of its owner's library out of the graveyard, or we do that twice, once from our hand and then once from the graveyard. So I like that. Again, we're seeing the utility of not just doing it once, but doing it twice. Boros Charm. Damage and destructibility or double strike. I like this one as well. Again, we can use it offensively or we can just give all of our permanents indestructible. Try to avoid a board wipe. And then for two mana, leaving two mana up at our graveyard, you know, two mana up, this card in our graveyard and a card in our hand, then we can give ourselves indestructibility um, again. And so I I, I, uh, I really like that. I think that fits pretty well. Is it charm? Can counter a spell, deal damage, or draw two, and then discard two. I like this because again, it can it can be a counter spell if we want it to be. It can draw some cards if we want it to be. Prismari command, damage, drawing cards, treasures, or destroying artifacts. Again, love this. We get to pick two. It can work pretty well on the way its way into the graveyard. Then we can cast it again back on its way out. And then Quandrix command, bouncing a creature, planeswalker, countering an artifact, enchantment spell, putting counters, or shuffling. Uh, three cards from a player's graveyard into the library. This is great because it can counter something. It can get rid of something from an opponent's graveyard if they're trying to use some things. So you can see these these commands and these charms have multiple modes, and I think that's where this deck can kind of shine is using those to our advantage. But not just with that. We're also going to pack things around it. We talked about Bedevil. Cosmic Rebirth can bring anything that's a permanent from our graveyard back to our hand and gain us some life. Of course, we're playing a lot of artifacts are playing a decent amount of creatures but we're playing some pretty great enchantments as well so 
I like this. This is just going to, if something gets destroyed and we didn't want it to, we can hopefully get it back. And then the best part about Cosmic Rebirth is then we can jumpstart it back out of our graveyard um, if we need to do it. Uh, again, Dovin's Veto for a counter spell. Again, counter it from our hand and then counter from our graveyard. Love that. Allied Armory's called doing some search. Puts it in the best part is it puts it into our hand. So this is even better. Search from our hand and then search from the graveyard. Eureka moment. Draw two and put a land from our hand on the battlefield. This is great. It's a little bit more expensive than we want to pay for this effect normally, but I think the benefit is we get to do it twice, right? So we kind of get the benefit uh, hopefully twice from this and we can use it and it is an instant. So if we hold that four mana up and then our opponents don't do anything, we can just do this jumpstart out of the graveyard, get that land on the battlefield for our next turn. Expansion Explosion, mainly probably here for that copy on the front half, but we could use it on the back half to deal a bunch of damage to our opponents. Faithful Mending for some draw and some life. This one has flashback. Um, so we could potentially just cast this without pitching the card. Uh, but what I like is we have the option, same thing with the Alvatic iteration. Uh, the only difference, of course, is if we do the jumpstart from Niv Mizzet, uh, we're not paying the extra mana for either of them. We would just be able to pay them for the normal cost. And like I said, depending on what we're doing, we don't mind discarding that card. Gross Pile, again, becomes better because we get to use it twice. Ink Shield's probably one of my favorite, like, random cards for this deck because... We can use it from our hand, get a bunch of inkling tokens, and then this gets us in our graveyard, and we can just hold up five mana and potentially ink shield again out of nowhere. And then mana morphos, uh, just getting us mana and, and drawing a card seems good, and it can potentially get uh, up something like the storm count for th a thousand year storm. All right, getting into the um, sorceries, a little bit less cheeky on the two color stuff, but um, we really want our ramps. We have far seek nature's lore. Uh, open the gates cares with the gates circular's root cares about the gates we're also playing temp with discovery because this can help us with the gates this can help with a lot of things a lot of people tend to take temp with discovery if you play it so i find that a lot of times we can take real advantage with temp with discovery on getting the lands we want and then we see the three visits there but as far as the two color sorceries Kalshi's award just seems great we get to pick as many as we want and then we can do the same thing back of our graveyard love escape to the wilds and it feels really good in this deck exiling the top five we can play an additional land um so we would just get a bunch of lands out of those top fives um and then we can go ahead and do that back again expressive iteration feels great we get to do this twice once from our hand right once out of our graveyard fevered suspicion seems like a really fun card um very expensive but you can hit a bunch of great stuff um uh, out of the things now uh, it does have rebounds so it's going to exile itself um when we cast it but what we could do is pitch this to something else and then re uh, cast it of our graveyard with jumpstart and it would rebound itself so only one time use but i think we're still going to get a ton of value hull bridge can take out some artifacts and enchantments uh, time wipe is a board wipe so it's two color board wipe, but we can pull niv miss it back to our hand wipe the best of the board and uh, then we can recast it of our graveyard because it is two colors. And then Urban Evolution drawing three and playing an additional land. So again, it is two colors so we can play it out of our graveyard. Getting up into the creatures. So we have a good mix of a few mana dorks that can tap for more than one color of mana. And then just some overall fun cards. So Bloom Tender for each color among permanents you control. Add a mana of that color. So hopefully we can get Nib it down. And then this just taps for five mana. Same thing with Fabro Elder. Uh, taps for every mana of each color among permanents we control. So those are great mana dorks. Dry to the Illusion Grow. Letting us play an extra land, but then turning all of our lands into every basic land type. So then they can tap for anything. General Fierce. Rock or Rick. Um, every time we cast a multicolored spell, we get a Golem. So this is pretty great because now we can kind of, again, we're trying to build up our board as we cast spells. So this makes a ton of sense. Gutter Snipe dealing damage when we cast spells. Hero Precinct 1 giving us a token. Monastery Mentor giving us monks and then having prowess. Narset, the new Narset from Aftermath, seems great here. Giving our creatures prowess. And then it can cast something out of our graveyard. The cool part is it's non-creature, non-land out of anyone's graveyard. So we can get some of our enchantments back. We could pitch a... Enchantment and cast up Narset. We're going to get something out of our opponent's graveyard with Narset as well. We're, we're playing Niv Mizzy, uh, the one from uh, the one from War of the Spark, the one from Multi Force Legends, just because we can get a bunch of st uh, stuff um, in each two color pair and get it into our hand. This is going to feed our hand. And then, of course, by way, feed our graveyard. Sedgemore Witch is going to make us a bunch of pests that when they die, gain us a life. Uh, Savine seemed pretty interesting for this deck. For all damage that would be dealt to Savine. 
Okay, and then it says, whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery from your graveyard, each turn copy it. You can choose new targets for the copy. Well, that's perfect. We're going to want to be jump-storing things out of our graveyards. I feel like Savine just makes a ton of sense. Storm Killed Artist making us treasures. What I like about this is if we play the Thousand-Year Storm with this, we're just making a ton of treasures. Varen seems great. So many of these other effects care about casting spells. Varen's going to double all of them. And then Witherbroom Apprentice, another one of our great... Um, Magecraft payoffs. Whenever you cast a, or copy an instant sorcery spell, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So this and Gutter Sniper kind of are, let's deal some damage, let's kind of hit our opponents out of the way. We're also playing Professor Onyx to do the same thing. Whenever you cast or copy an instant sorcery spell, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Um, Onyx can, on the plus one, lose a life. Look at the top three, put one into our hand and the rest into the graveyard. So we could load some spells into our graveyard that way. The minus three, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power. And then the minus eight, uh, each opponent may discard a card. If they don't, they lose three life. Repeat this process six times. Most of them not. We're getting that plus one, kind of getting cards into our hand, loading our graveyard, and then just using her Magecraft trigger to kind of knock out the game. Chandra, uh, I love here. Just casting, copying that first instant or sorcery you play each turn can give us some mana and do some fun things. And then, of course, we had to play Invasion of Ravnica. When enters the battlefield, exile target on land permanent. There's an opponent controls that isn't exactly two colors. And then on the back side, whenever you cast a spell, it's exactly two colors. Look at the top six. You may reveal a card that's exactly two colors among them. Put it in your hand, put the rest on the bottom. So it kind of helps us search for more. Uh, so, of course, Inv Invasion of Ravica just felt right. It fits the theme of Niv Mizzy, it fits the two color theme. And I, I don't know. I think this deck seems kind of interesting. I, I don't think it's super OP, right? I mean, at the end of the day, Niv Mizzet is, um, at least the both five color Niv Mizzets are not commanders that are known to be particularly broken, right? Niv Mizzet's two color commander cards are the ones that tend to take that mantle and being one card combos, or two, one part of a two card combos, right, with the Niv Mizzet Perun. But um, I don't know. I think this is kind of interesting. I love being able to play a lot of these two color cards and really getting to use them to mass effect. Um, what I like about um, Niv Mizzy, the one from War of the Spark, is all of our creatures that are two colors can be grabbed with Niv Mizzet Reborn as well, not just uh, non creature spells. So that that's kind of the added benefit there. But again, I was just trying to find what's a way that we can just take some good advantage of the two colors, have some fun, slink some spells let me know what you think down in the comments of niv is supreme is this a deck that you care about or am i just <laughs> trying to have too much fun with the concept i'd love to hear what you think like the video if you liked div mizzy subscribe if you want to catch some more content we have probably two more weeks of content before we can start talking about lord of the rings before we get to see the entire set andrew and i are going to be brewing up a storm for that one and we are very excited for lord of the rings if you're excited for that subscribe get ready because we are going in head first the shorts are coming back the videos are coming and i am excited and i will catch you guys next time